Welcome to the first ever Coffee and Dev, where our goal is to grow as developers over a cup of coffee, which I have my cup of coffee right over here in my Hello Kitty mug, grow just 1% every week. And it doesn't matter if you're junior or intermediate or senior or principal, that is the purpose of Coffee and Dev. Short tidbits of information that you can use every week. And I'm your host, Corey Darby. I'm a principal software developer at Blue Cat. I've been doing software development for 10 plus years and software development management for numerous years as well, from small companies to large companies to teams with no team to building a team to inheriting teams, legacy and brand new projects. I'm all over the place. Today's topic is going to be on giving better code feedback. It was a very good topic to start, I think, as episode one, because it crosses all experience boundaries. It doesn't matter if you're junior, or intermediate, or senior. There's always something that can be improved here. Now, obviously, there are scenarios where I think the more junior you are, the more likely you are to make some of the common mistakes. And you also have a different perspective on what you think a code review should be. You think, oh, the mighty gods of the senior devs are going to come down and give me all the wisdom that I possibly could ever know. And they're just going to find all the bugs for me. Um, and while true to some extent, um, it's not necessarily the best thing either. You know, the best code reviews are ones that get you to change your perspective or to improve the code base overall. And it's not to just bank on more senior or more experienced people to simply find everything for you. And on the flip side, your more experienced people aren't using code reviews to do that anymore. They're looking for more that, hey, did I miss something that's an edge case? You know, is there a better pattern that could be applied here or am I over complexing the code base? So I think we should start talking about the requirements because I think it's very easy when you do a code review to jump into the technical. You're like, I want to read the code. I want to be like, hey, maybe we shouldn't use this if statement here. But you need to take a step back. I think we get too eager to jump into the technical and we don't focus enough on the things that are before the technical. You know, you, you need to go back and to review code well. You need to read the ticket. You need to understand what the feature scope is. You need to be able to understand what the developer is trying to achieve, you know, the code might be doing one thing, but if the feature is looking for something entirely else, the code could inherently be logically correct, but not meet the feature of the business. So um, you have to look, is the code implementing it? Are we introducing things that don't meet the requirements? Um, is there feature creep, which is essentially a developer going adding features that are exceeding what the ticket asked for? So. We definitely, before we even jump into it, we need to know the requirements. Too many times I've seen devs uh, get assigned or jump in, oh yeah, I'll review the code. They never read the ticket. They literally just go and read the code. And how do you actually understand what is a requirement of what the code is supposed to do if you haven't read the actual requirements? So that is a good thing, I think, to give better feedback is before you can even give a better code review, you need to first understand what is trying to be achieved with the requirements. The next is precise and explicit, um, extremely precise and explicit, like the difference of jump out of a plane, right? Very precise. Jump out of a plane only when wearing a parachute, very explicit, precise and explicit very different consequences, right? You jump out a plane without a parachute, you're going to have some trouble. Um, now, on the code level, how we see this is typically something like someone will highlight five lines of code and they will say something like, I don't like the name of this function. What is this? What function? What is the name that you're proposing, right? Or maybe they've narrowed it down to like, I don't like the function do stuff. But it doesn't actually give you any other context. So then you, as the um, submitter of the code review, is going to say, what should we change it as? And then the next person is going to say, uh, I don't know, what do you think of, instead of do stuff, we call it charge user. 
you need to eliminate a lot of this. You know, it could have been simply solved from the get-go instead of saying, I don't like the name of this function. It could have been the function do stuff should be named as charge user payment because of the responsibility of that function is related to charging the user. It is not related to whatever the other name was on the function. Or that is too generic and doesn't encompass the scope of responsibilities as seen by the functions, blah, blah, blah. You know, you're trying to reduce your round trips. You're trying to make it so that the other person almost doesn't have to like read your comments. The most ideal code reviews I get typically are less about what the person's written in terms of um, the sentences they provided and more about the actual code snippets. Instead of saying like, oh, I don't like how this function's operating, or I feel like this function's too complex, right? Where is it too complex? How is it too complex? How could we change it? The best reviews I've gotten is instead of this, and they'll just include the snippet of code that you've had, how about this? And they will actually just provide the snippet of code they are proposing. There is no confusion. There is no, like, any of this, imprecise and non-explicit stuff, and it just saves time and reduces the, what is my next slide, is time is money, don't waste it. And I think this is very, very common um, and has been accelerated with the, like COVID and all of our remote work from home. You have to value your time as a submitter of a pull request. But you, once you value your time, you will understand that you need to value the other person's time. The same thing as when you're reviewing. And what I mean by that is my prior slide talked about, oh, when you're not precise and explicit, you get these round trips. Hey, I think we should change the function name. Someone replies, what function? The function on line five. Someone else replies, what do you propose changing that name as? The difference is you're like, oh, that's not so bad. It's not so bad when you're in an office and you can wheel over and the person's right there. But you need to start thinking that that other person is 12 hours ahead of you. So for every reply there, you've lost one day. And this compounds because your work, someone else might depend on. You might have a cross-team dependency. So everyone's waiting on everyone. So you need to value time and don't waste it. Um, the good example I got, not related to development, um, was someone said, you should write your communication as if you're the CEO of the company, writing something to another CEO of a very, you know, Fortune 500 company, because you realize how important your time is. You realize how explicit, explicit and precise you need to be, right? Because you know that communication is going to other people and their time is also valuable because you understand how valuable your time is. Um, a real life example was I used to run a, a startup a long time ago and we needed some legal consulting and the lawyer was $1,000 an hour. Let me tell you, before that meeting happened, I damn sure made, I went to, made sure I went to the bathroom because a five minute bathroom break was gonna cost me $60. And it's the same thing with your code reviews. You need to take a step back and realize, how do I reduce my round trips? How do I value and respect the other person's time? Just like I hope they you know, value and respect my time. So make sure it is precise, explicit, down to the point, and you provide the context someone else needs. You know, If you're doing something that isn't related to the feature scope and it's not documented, in your pull request, you need to explain this. Hey, I talked to Bob and they said that that feature shouldn't be implemented that way because of X, Y, Z. I actually missed something on one of my slides, but we'll just cover it here. The most common thing I see is you can be brilliant. You can have 500 years of code experience and you can read technical code. And the problem isn't always technical. I can take someone who's from Google and put them in front of code and they will say that code is on a technical level, 100% correct. The problem might be on a business level, it is incorrect. And this was related to the uh, knowing your requirements and being, I guess, explicit and precise. 
is imagine reading code and you see variables set as false. And right after that, there's an if statement. And you're like, oh, that's probably a bug because that condition is always going to be false. Right, we can all read that. As devs, we all could find that bug. Now, you could read a bunch of code and go, on a technical level, there's no bug, and you deploy it. And then all of a sudden, someone from some department comes and says, there's a bug, there's a bug. And you're like, what do you mean there's a bug? We code reviewed it. Every dev in the company read that code. There's no bugs. Ah, there's a business bug. You know, what happens if no one implemented the feature or misimplemented a feature based off the business requirements? In this case, it's like, imagine a user who wants to upgrade their plan on Netflix from one to the other, and they're halfway through the month. Some businesses have something called prorate, which means you give back that difference on the new plan they're upgrading to. So if the plan was $15 to upgrade to, and they had a $10 plan, well, depends on how far they are in the month, you would basically discount on that $15. The code is never going to tell you this. On a logical, technical level, the machine is never going to tap you on the shoulder and say, by the way, my syntax analysis of your code says that your business might do prorate and you probably need to write the logic around that. <laughs> so you need to do this. Um, and you don't want, I guess, related to wasting time is to go all the way to the end and wait until your review and submit this. And someone from like, you know, or even worse, it gets past review and you're demoing it. And someone from like, say your product department comes and says, wait, why is there no prorate feature? Because guess what? That restarts the entire cycle. You need to go back to development. You need to regather the requirements. You need to get another code review. And now the dev who reviewed your first code review is like, God damn it, I need to review the same thing twice. <laughs> so at least my last point on reviewing and related to time is automation is greater than humans. And what I mean is if you have code reviews and they are talking about things like formatting or syntax or convention or standardization, you are wasting your time and everyone else's because these should be tools and there should be no human communication. There should not be a time when someone's saying, are we going to use camel case? here or are we going to use snake case on our variables or this file doesn't uh, follow a convention of this file tools will save you so much time and it the point of a code review is not these tiny things because they can be solved by tools code reviews are for the bigger problems of making sure that the business is moving forward the requirements have been met and you're picking the best pattern that you possibly can to have the code implemented automate all the trivial things and with that said, I didn't get to drink any coffee, but I hope you enjoyed your coffee. <laughs>